to take a chill pill and go go like, all right, I don't have to agree or disagree with the other person, just have a willingness to listen and understand. Because understanding doesn't mean conforming that data into you as a part of your being and letting it take you over like the board collective. It just means having an awareness that a perspective exists so that you can look at it and agree to disagree if that's what you're going to do. And that's what civil grown-ups do. They don't beat each other up over the head or commit genocide or war or run corporations like Monsanto or shake their arms on campuses like Triglypuff. They are freaking civil with each other and respectful and they agree to disagree and they respect others as they would respect themselves. That's what clear communication does. Not everybody has to agree yeah. with everybody on everything. No one will ever agree with everybody. No one will ever like everybody. But you don't have to like somebody to respect their rights as a human being equal to your rights as a human being. Yeah. That's called what should be common sense but isn't. Which is what we kind of need. That that exact perspective is what we need our world governments to have so that we wouldn't have all this turmoil and war <laughs> and everything. But I feel that, you know, the, the new generation that's coming out kind of – has adopted this as an accepting of everybody. So I, I feel it's just a matter of time before this revolution of consciousness and exactly what you're saying takes over the planet. And we all start looking at each other from that perspective and become not just tolerant of each other, but accept each other and even celebrate each other's differences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. I mean, so far, I think um, I think this has been a, a really good conversation. And I'm, you know, I hope that not only us, but a lot more people everywhere have a lot more conversations like this, because like, this is a time where we're all facing so much stuff that like all the woo woo is being banged out of all of us. And it's like we're being forged in the, the, the fires of contrast in change, in, in change, you know, and that we're going to be soon, you know, wielding something more better, um, you know, for just lack of a better way of saying it, you know, mm -hmm. call it going through a hazing process, you know, wh whatever, whatever you want to, uh, you know, refer to it as, but there's definitely um, a, a portion of people on this planet who are just so disgusted at the old paradigm to the point that instead of you know having an absolute tantrum and inadvertently hypocritically diving back into the paradigm their minds open and they're willing to understand and they're willing to face whatever demons and uh willing to do what need be without vomiting all the projections including giving themselves permission to own their emotions because if you don't own your own your right to hate yourself and judge yourself um then you're not going to own your right to, yeah. to, to to love yourself either and if you don't own your right to hate yourself then if you hate yourself you're going to be negative feedback looping i hate myself and i shouldn't be doing that which means i'm naughty which means i'm guilty which means i'm bad which just it just continues to tighten where as soon as you give yourself permission to hate yourself it's it begins to start to subside and before you know what you start thinking you know hating myself is kind of stupid i was just in a bad mood i think i got better things to feel and better things to do right i agree oh i just these conversations these 2017 conversations have just been awesome you know <laughs> the, the one today and the others I feel that um, these talks are definitely needed, and this is awesome, like having a discussion about it. And uh, I want to even like portal, with Portal to Ascension, I want to start creating, because we have like groups all over the world. I want to start creating like town hall meetings for Ascension talks or whatever we want to call it, but people getting down to not just talk about like the spirituality and the emotional state, but also talk about how we can create a real change and create a world where we can all live in harmony with ourselves and the planet. Cool. That's a great idea. Well, as I was as as I was saying to Max earlier about exactly that, um, most most people, um, to you know, like what when they're trying to to fight against the tyranny, this that or whatever, most people either go one of two ways. They they either don't bother to ask the question okay, well, what if you win, what then? Because they never figured out anything to replace the old system with. Um, then the people who have pondered that question, they come up with solutions like resource-based economics, et cetera. But what both sides seem to, uh, seem to not 
take into consideration is transitional phases because no one can can quit a paradigm cold turkey and with the more we the more we chill out and calm down and get more creative we start to realize that these transitional phases start on the grassroots level with the individual and it's it's very it's very little small actions done on mass you know everybody's trying to think of some new invention to make or some uh, some new way to completely change the world in a big way but people forget that the big comes from the small the big is made up of of smaller components always so if you've got a lot of people doing just one small little thing that makes a big wave yeah. and then then you just increase the number of small little things and then eventually you know it's it's the age-old question of if you wanted to change every fish in the ocean how would you do it Wh which would be the easiest to catch out each fish one by one or to change the whole ocean at once and therefore change the fish so if you're changing the environment of the world around the psychopaths to be more and more incompatible with psychopathic bullshit, then it doesn't matter what the psychopaths do or not because they won't be able to conduct themselves. Eventually they would be reduced to just screaming idiots on the street corner that nobody cares about and laughs at and, and that's it with no power mm -hmm. at all. So yeah, I mean, it's all about, it's all about transitional phases, you know, I mean, how much chaos do you think there would be if someone got up on, on TV and said, okay, everybody, um, we're going to globally uh, quit the monetary system now, and then okay. we're going to go into resource-based economics, which is a, which is a much more mature way of doing it. And we know um, our educational system is not up to par anywhere near close to train you into the mentality that you need to thrive in this sort of system. And none of us know know what the fuck we're doing. But hey, best of luck to all of us. Let's crash yeah, and right. burn, burn together, like like handing the matches to the three year old. So yeah. we need we need transitional phases because no one can just do these big leaps. Yeah, a lot of people have no idea what that even phrase is. You know, just because we're in the community that knows it, there's a lot of information that needs to come out yet, and there's there's a long way to go. You know, I used to think there would be a spontaneous shift and everything would just change overnight, but now I'm realizing even more that there's a long way to go. But we are, I feel, we are on a positive yeah. slope going upwards. Oh, I, I I believe based on what I've been seeing and based on what I know, mm -hmm. like really profound change in our life in our lifetime oh yeah hell, hell yeah but exactly how long is anybody's guess i mean the way i figure it 2012 is and i said this on a previous hangout with max but 2012 is the center of the procession of the equinoxes um 18 years on each side um it's not like the procession is a line that the earth jumps over like it's hopscotch or something something and boom procession done mm -hmm. it's a 36 year period plus there's the photon belt and other things to yeah. take in, into consideration but either way um we are now on the on you know the other side of, of the 18 year period and if you figure that um 2012 was the crossing point 2013 is is year zero so if you figure that um you look at the collective of, of human consciousness um metaphorically as if it was like one child and directly compare it to the development of the child of an individual um then basically year zero 2013 was like a recalibration so year one 2014 would be like humanity's one year old 2015 two years old 2016 three years old um 2017 four years old now if we look at how how humanity acted during those years during 2014 um did humanity act like a typical one-year-old um collectively the way you would expect a one-year-old to act the answer is yes in 2015 did humanity act like a, you would expect a typical two-year-old to act yes it did um 2016 hold on a minute um i am on air um sorry about that um Anyway, so um, uh, tw 2016, um, age three, and you know, 2017, age four, and 2016 were people acting, you know, collectively like three-year-olds. Yes, in um, in 2017, are they acting collectively like four-year-olds? Yes, they're really they're really starting to, because let's look at the look at the general traits of the development of a four-year-old. Um, they're starting to develop um, longer memories, better um, better neural network 
work retainment, they're able to process both um, emotions and um, intellectual data better. And so if you compare that to humanity's capacity to not be so forgetful and to better process intellectual information and to better process emotional information, humanity is simultaneously having the extreme curiosity to move forward more productively than ever, simultaneously with all of the fearful temper tantrums that a four-year-old might have in a bad mood, but that even the, even the temper tantrum people are starting to be a little bit more open-minded than they were say a year or two ago even during a temper tantrum or at the very least they're being more they're being more honest and forthcoming about why they're having the temper tantrum it's like I don't like you because of this block on whatever instead of like you know so so we can see a shift and if we're going to use this as a measure in the years to come um that means if it goes along this fractal then the 18 year mark if that means 18 being the the maturity of a person representing the maturity of the human civilization if it takes if it takes that sort of a period of a time then that means 18 years you know from 2012 onward when we hit that point we are going to be looking at a very different world that we can't comprehend right now even even within with, at the yeah, end of that 18 awesome. years and, and really, if we look at the world we have right now compared to the world even 10 years ago, 10 years ago, do you think you could have comprehended the world of now? If you, if, if you say yes, you're probably lying. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about that one. Yeah, no, it's, it's changing, man. Conscious expanding and technology is going on exponential level in its own, on its own. And if these technologies that we know exist are true too, when they come out, the disclosure of those <laughs> terraform the whole entire planet. You know, you, you know what? Um, this is this is also very interesting too. For for single processors um, within com within computer speeds and such, um, they they hit a hard limit for for a single processor. A point of do not go, do not collect two hundred dollars, do not get any faster. The way they've been able to increase the speeds is using um, parallel processing in the form of multi-core and or multi-processor motherboards. And that tells us a lot that it, because the computer then works way more efficiently um, to get, with a lot of a lot of smaller separate things working working together in cooperation sovereignly so as above so below that should th those computers are kind of telling us that um, if we even one metaphoric motherboard equivalent of human beings could be mature and sovereign enough to work together in that cooperative highly functional way then we can do a lot just like that type of computer can do a lot so even our technology is trying to show us that being individuated and separate and and all that while simultaneously one with the whole and cooperative with all components willing to you know to do the same mm -hmm. you know our individuality is valid and the multiplicity is valid so computer technology is trying to trying to show us that because everything is a reflection right exactly cool. what do you think what, what do you think about that Kristen? and real quick guys i only have around three more minutes and i have to oh. get on another call oh no no problem um okay is there is there anything else um uh you wanted to say to everybody else watching or say to Kristen, yes. or say to me or anything else Kristen wants to say well, let me do a little plug real quick for the, for the Full Disclosure Conference that we have coming up. So uh, we have the Full Disclosure Online Conference, which is a five-day event, five-day webinar, April 19th to 23rd. And each day is going to be on a different topic. So day one, we have global financial fraud and free energy. So it's, we're going to be talking about the banking elite, what happened with the central banking system, and also solutions to break free from that. Free energy, we're going to talk about theoretical equations and as well as practical devices that we can move away from the power structure that is currently sweeping over the planet so we can have some sort of equality when it comes to energy. And then day two is going to be medical advancements and plant remedies. So we're going to go over advanced medical technology and also plant medicines such as ayahuasca, iboga, San Pedro. Interesting. And then day three 
is going to be True World History. So day three is going to be on, uh, we're going to have five presenters each day on everything from our ancient civilizations, different stories, Atlantis, Lemuria, uh, the elongated skulls that Brian Forrester found. He's going to be talking about those. And it's going to be a full encompassing worldview of our ancient history going to our galactic history that is not mainstream, right? Day, f um, day, where am I? Day four is going to be extraterrestrial awareness. So Saturday, day four is extraterrestrials, and then the last day, day five, is our spiritual essence. And the purpose for day five is to kind of shed light on the bigger picture of how, even though we're talking about all these conspiracies and these dark avenues, that is really something bigger at play here, and how to embrace it all, and become the that, spiritual that beings of. Yeah, to, to embrace the uh, the negative as a positive opportunity exactly. for, for positive change instead of seeing it as a burden. Awesome. Yeah. Not so, not not saying it's easy to do, but just saying it's what we're learning to do. <laughs> right, right. And that's what when we when we do our events, we always throw that element in there because it's easy if we do like a whole entire event where we where this guy is talking about the uh, uh, government cover ups for four hours. It's easy to think like that's what we're trying to energize. So we always end it with either myself coming on or somebody else coming on to really show about how the bigger picture and you into channeling must know this because they're always talking about how like we have these soul agreements and soul contracts to have these experiences and even the, the negative beings that are doing these things to us are actually higher dimensional beings on this planet here to give us this experience that we signed up for. So it's bringing yeah. it back full and, circle and, and, that. and that and that and that soul, soul contracts can be uh, avoided, rewritten, rewritten. Any, yeah, yeah, any, yeah, exactly. anything, anytime, be, because we because we are we are free will beings and we're not exclusively locked into anything. But a part of the game has been thinking we're exclusively locked into it because of the whole forgetting process and forgetting our power and forgetting all that. Yes. Um, Kristen, is there anything more you wanted to say to everybody else or say to him or ask him or to me or, or whatever or vice versa? Um, yeah, I have two things. First thing is, um, does it do you charge money for your events and talks? Yes, we do. So for okay, good. You know, all day conference is fifty five dollars, eight hours. Workshop is thirty three. The five day event, everything comes with unlimited replay access. So you can watch it for the rest of your life. That's and awesome. The five day events one hundred and forty four. And with the, uh, the intention for actually bringing in the money is we're probably the number one, um, the number one redistributors of funds to conscious presenters in the world because we're working with so many people that 50 to 75 percent of everything that comes in goes directly to the presenter, so they can continue doing their research, putting into yes. technology, that kind of stuff. So where I'm really excited to be growing because the more we grow, the more we're able to fund people. Like we're funding Michael Tellinger doing the Ubuntu movement, and we're creating a whole tour for him. So it's like these well, little things able to yeah. get back to the community not only hey. that it's like even you funding yourself and you know making a living off of what you do yeah. it's only fair because you know you deserve to live and if you aren't getting anything you know out of like say you're putting in hard hours of research and lots of soul into what you're preparing you deserve to profit off of that yeah, exactly not that it has to be something extreme but it's only fair like yeah. it's like valuing yourself is equal to valuing others so and i'm owning that now for a long time i felt like uh even though i was charging i didn't feel comfortable owning that i should charge now i'm like finally saying like it's all energy and wherever you put yeah. your energy is where you what you energize yeah. so <laughs> money is energy put it towards oh, what yeah. you want and some yeah. people feel <laughs> like the only thing that's worth having is if they have to pay for it not everyone but that's also yeah. another thing. It really might make people value it more if they have to pay it a little bit. Yeah, I, I have a, I, I have a question just out of curiosity, Neil. Um, on average, approximately, just a rough figure, about yeah. uh, each of these webinars, conferences, all that. About how many hours on average do those tend to go? I mean, I'm not looking for an absolute. Yeah. I'm just looking for an average. So uh, for the all-day conferences, seven to eight hours. We've had a few that were just like so awesome and uh, we had like six or seven presenters that went to 10 hours. So it's like 10 a.m. until 6 p.m., sometimes a little longer than that. And then the workshops go from around three hours to four hours. So Brad okay. Johnson is doing his workshop this weekend. He's doing a three-hour workshop. Because I I had a really cool idea that I, I will discuss with you later because you're yeah. you're you're running out of time but you you, you inspired inspired me to a really cool idea that I will nice. I will share share with you next time we're we're on voice 
on on Skype, and I think you'll like it. I was just kind of inspired by it, but we're running out of time, so I'm not going to get into it on air, but but later on I'll get into it, and then if okay. you like it and whatever, we can recap it on here later, whatever you want to do. Cool. Um, but everybody else, um, thank you for, for watching, and um, make sure to check out. Uh, portal for ascension. Portal to ascension. Uh, a portal to ascension. My bad. I'm a little. I'm okay. a little tired. Thank you for correcting me. Portal to ascension. Dot o r g. And you guys like have a Patreon or anything like that? I have a what? Sorry. A Patreon. What's the Patreon? Oh, you don't know what a Patreon is. No. Um, uh, uh, Max Egan has one. I, I set up Max Egan's for him. Um, a Patreon is basically. They're a third-party intermediary. They don't. They don't give a crap like what your political affiliations or whatever. Are, as long as you're not doing yeah. anything illegal, et cetera, et cetera. So, what they are is, they they allow people to have patrons to where you can set it up to where um, people can subscribe on a monthly to where it goes like from their their PayPal or checking account or whatever uh. once a month taken out goes through Patreon and then goes into your your PayPal bank account or whatever uh, yeah and you could set different rates you know um, uh, as low as a dollar a month all the way up to whatever and you could just have it to where like you know hey I'm doing this ser ser service this is for you to help us uh, you know contribute if you want to contribute or you know once you're big enough if you wanted to have different like rewards and prizes and stuff like for people's contribution is a little kickback thank you for the different levels you can do that too um, we could talk mo more about that later but um, um, a lot of people are using Patreon um, Max is like living on Patreon right now literally it's uh, uh, okay. pretty cool in that way cool, so yeah, we'll, yeah so I'll I'll talk to you about that later I know time limitation probably the worst time ever to bring up this stuff because we're, <laughs> at, the, we're at the end of it but um I'll I'll talk about the other thing and, and patreon um, with you oh, later just, if you had already had one I just wanted people to go to it so they could give you money you know, you know how it goes no. um, <laughs> you can go to our web well, what you can do is go to our website join our email list and we do have a membership area our website's kind of like Netflix you can sign up for one webinar or you can sign up to be a member but it's not a state of the art membership platform so I'm thinking maybe I can work with patreon maybe they'll have what I'm looking for you know um well well yeah, well, yeah. Patreon is just it's it's a it's a way for people to pay content creators. Yeah, yeah. That that gets around a lot of loopholes of, of a lot of um other things. Um, a, a PSEC has a Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash PSEC Media. Katarina Roy has one forward slash Katarina Roy. Um, they're getting they're 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 getting they're catching on and getting pretty popular because they are a really decent uh, service and I think they're one of the more positive, uplifting things uh, for humanity at this time so far. Anyway, I. I know you you have to go. I'm not trying to keep you longer than you want to be. Me and Kristen can stay on a, a tab longer if she wants to to wrap up esoterics. Uh, you don't have to be here for that if you if you don't want. But I want to thank you for. Yeah, I'm heading up. Uh, I'm gonna I want to thank you for coming on with us and uh, hope you have a really great day. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate you, brother. Kristen, pleasure meeting you, and we'll talk soon. Okay. Yes, nice uh, to meet you. Good luck. We we appreciate you too. Right. Catch you later. Have a good thank one. you, brother. Talk to you later. Bye. Yep. So. What'd you think, Kristen? Pretty cool, I thought. I thought he was really cool, and he toughed it out. I'm sure, you know, with his um, involvement in some of the more new age aspects, hearing you, he seemed to not be so, you know, headstrong with the whole positivity and love and light. But, like, um, I don't know. I think maybe you triggered him, but he toughed it out and stayed on the call. I thought that was cool. Yeah, well, well, like like he said, we're all like triggering each other at this time. This is just like you know, just just like everything is getting getting stirred up for for everybody, and you know, people like me and you and him and Katarina and so on have just kind of made our choice that yeah, you know, we're we're sick of running from stuff. Let's just start start facing things head on and you know do more good because it's like you know for, from the from the semi-pessimistic but slightly optimistic end of things if someone wants to look at it that way it's like all right if i'm if i'm gonna feel screwed whether whether i do what's good for me or what's bad for me may as well do what's good for me because then at least I, I get the payoff and what i mean by what's good for me i don't mean that in like a greed sense but like what's literally like good for you health wise and conduct wise and being your authentic self and having respect and so on and, and all the stuff that you know we talked about you know in this previously that that humanity's learning how to do getting out of yeah. its collect, collective stockholm syndrome and 
you know, not being not being so self-destructive and all that. And um, I thought it was it was cool that you know you could see you know that someone like him is just like you know a regular guy, and he's surrounded by you know like this he's got like a freaking all star lineup and guess what that all star lineup yes they too are just regular people that are yep. that, that are just getting together you know and, and do especially in the truth movement and all the different facets of it the spirituality movement. Yeah, you know, there's people that might be parading as a guru or might be parading as the ultimate truth. But, like, when it comes down to it, we are just people that are dealing with a world where we are have been made the subordinates. And we have been made to be nothing and be less than. So, like, yeah. obviously, if someone is going around talking about government corruption, they are not any above you. That's the whole thing we're trying to debunk is this terrible, yeah. you know, just this virus of people that have placed themselves above us and then us now yeah. made in the position of needing their authority. And sovereignty is nowhere to be found. Yeah, gu gu guruism is well intended, but cru corrupts quickly. It's, it's kind of like what I referred to earlier is altruism gone horribly wrong. Um, So yeah, but I mean, I, I, I just thought that like, yeah, this, this is just like, it was a really cool hangout today. I'm, I'm sure that, um, you know, we'll get on with him to, to do more in the future. And plus, um, you know, from, from what he told me, him and him and, um, Mel met recently and, you know, they're working on, on figuring out some sort of collaborations between them. So it's like, I'm seeing more and more different people, different networks, different groups that are that are really seriously like focused on on the compassion element, which also means also focused on basing our shit and all that. The people who are really really serious about it are starting to come together with more ease and flow, and simultaneously, the people who are not really really serious about it are very easily. Um, repelled away but without all the drama and stuff just like certain people that just like block me for being just nice you know and we both know who i'm talking about i'm not going to name names because i don't want to disrespect the person but um you know it's just it's just yeah you know um all this stuff is just a part of the process and um, and I did think it was it was really cool that like that person was very straightforward and civil about it and like all that like they weren't an asshole or anything. So like I think that's another part of these shifts we're going through that it's actually possible to experience contrast we don't like but not in like this uber dramatic suffering world ending you know catastrophic way that most people are, are used to feeling things like. Like when people are suspecting that something aggravating is about to happen or the other shoe is going to drop or whatever, people are sitting there like, you know, this is not happy time. This is something that they are dreading. Yeah. So it's it's just really cool to be to be able to see that it's actually possible that most of the time that, that it can be possible to, to move more and more into an ease and flow that even that which we dislike is not hard hitting. It still happens, but it, it's not, it's not such a hit. Yeah. I, I, I think you've, you've noticed that too, at least to some levels that, that some things are at the very least easier to understand than they used to be and by god confusion is one of the most annoying things ever like that that wanting to understand and not being able to find the answer anywhere and just driving yourself crazy with confusion so at least at least the more of the the, the knowing that you get about this stuff and and you know sorting through your stuff and and going through you know just all the different shifts and in, in learning that you're going through um it, it, at least it gets it, it gets easier in the sense that there's less confusion because the more aware you are it's like okay i see what that's happening instead of like oh my god the boogeyman in the darkness that i can't see is coming for me ah 
So, I mean, the experience you're having will still suck every bit as much as it would have sucked in the first place, but at least, you, you know, you're not terrified and confused of as much because you have more knowledge about what these things are. Yeah, just like the whole um, facing my anxiety the other day and my shame and a bunch of, like, shitty feelings. I have faced that in the past, you know, when certain things would happen. But, like, it was um, the other day it was a little bit different because... It wasn't as ex perfectly into the world like first time I had felt it. It felt like everything was over, but now it was more of a scaled back thing where, yeah, I still have those dreadful feelings of sometimes hopeful hopelessness, but um, there was also an air of this is just part of it. This is what's there. This is what I need to you know sort through and. It is what it is right now. Just sorting through it. Yeah. Ha! Ah, we definitely live in interesting times. Yes. So, we've been, uh, um, as far as I could tell, we've been talking for roughly, maybe not exactly two hours, but you know, give or take something like that. Um, would you like to um, end the um, the live stream and go to private, or do you have more that you uh, you you want to share out there with um, YouTube land and beyond? I'd like to end the live chat. What about yeah. you? Yeah, I don't uh, I don't really have too much more to say, especially like. Admittedly, I'm running on nicotine right here. This uh, was my coffee before I drank it, obviously. So nicotine, caffeine, and um, no sleep. Been been kind of running that on uh, on that all day. And as you know, the more tired I start to get, I get just a little bit more rambly. So like we yeah. can st we can definitely start to start to see that effect where it's getting you know getting getting harder to not ramble so it would probably be a very good time to end this so everybody thank you bye thank you very much for for watching and and listening and all that um not not sure where where richard hamilton went he was going to be here but that didn't happen and um katarina just wasn't feeling up to it because um you know, she's just uh, tired. She was busy, and you know, she just wants to chill. So she's not really filling up uh, up to it. So that's all good and fun. Um, and um, Kristen, as far as anybody wanting to reach you online, is there any preference that that you have for where you want people to find you, or what's up? Um, yeah. Okay. So I really um, <clears throat> I use a lot of Facebook mostly, or you could find me on Instagram. My Facebook is um, Kristen Meyer. Let me see something real quick. It's facebook.com slash thinking Kristen. And then my Instagram is at Kristen.Evelyn. So. Yeah. And if you. And, and if you want to get to Kristen's PSEC videos on this channel, as well as um, videos playlisted on my channel from her channel, obviously, then just go to the PSEC channel. That's youtube.com forward slash PSEC documentary. So that's P-S-E-C documentary. And um, and yeah, I think it was really, really cool having um, Neil on and hope everybody enjoyed all of that. Um, yeah. I've, I've like, I won't, I can't say that I've known Neil since before, 2011 but like we've been acquaintances of each other not like we that we really talk much but he mentioned brad johnson i will also say that um the the last girlfriend i had i i met through um brad johnson and um out of the two best female friends that i have right now that being you and katarina i met katarina also through oh gee synchronicity guess where brad johnson yay <laughs> so so there 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 you go and then you know, and of course I met Neil through Brad Johnson. So all the cool people come through the Johnson. What can I say? It's just how the fifth dimension works. Yes, I yep. guess. <laughs> Respect to the Johnson. Peace out. Bye-bye.